Hey everybody, I'm Dawn Zoldai, CEO of P3 Tech Consulting, and I'm so honored to be here today with Edwin Sanchez. Edwin is the CTO and co-founder of a brand new startup called Vodix, and they're doing something you may not have heard of, but you will after this. It's called Drone Orchestration. Welcome, Edwin. Thank you for having me here, Don. It's it's a real pleasure, and I'm excited to be you know here and have the opportunity to showcase our platform. Today, we're gonna to show them real world demos from three countries, the United States, Canada, and Colombia, where they don't have to, right? The folks out there don't have to imagine anymore. They can see how this actually works. So I'm really excited for you to walk us through this demonstration, Edwin. So why don't we go ahead and start and you can tell us how it's going to begin. Sure, Don, let's roll. I mean, I'm excited, let's go. Okay. Right, so what are we so, looking at here? Yeah, right now we're looking at the uh, the the section, you know, where you actually do the managing. So you do the managing here. The first thing you do in the manage section is to actually create a project. It's optional, so you can create a project where you actually can, can consolidate several operations. Something important is that you can have or establish this as the way to communicate between people who's not familiar to the drone industry or the drone operation but it still requires something. I mean, the, the, the user can add, you know, all sorts of information, uh, KML, or can actually add a PDF file where information is required, uh, all sorts of different pieces of information, or you as a planner can request information from a user uh, in order to be able to uh, properly create the plan for executing a mission. Once that's set up, you pretty much are ready, and then you click on, um, submit and it's just there and it goes through the process of updating the different things. Then we're moving on to creating, you know, zones. So zones for us in the system is geofences, you know, 3D geofences where you actually establish an operational area, a virtual area. This is pretty cool for safety because it does allow to uh, enclose the operation in an area that is extremely safe to operate. Not even the pilot on the field can exceed that, you know, limit, that uh, virtual limit. The very first thing you define is the area where you're going to operate, the name for the zone, and then, you know, once you are ready with that and establish, you know, like the ceiling and the floor of your, um, uh, the, 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 the area, then you can actually um, enter into the drawing uh, section. So once you enter the drawing section, as you see here, yeah. I'm going to go and type, for example, I'm planning on a solar farm in Houston. So I'm typing in the area where uh, my, my solar farm is, as you see here, for example. I'm going to start defining a very simple uh, geofence around my geofence, my, my solar farm, uh, by actually tossing waypoints to the area, as you see, for example. Bear in mind that while I, I'm building this um, area, that you can actually define that through uploading a KML for complex polygons. And you can even, you know, type in the specific coordinates of the waypoints that, that will become your um, geofence. Now, uh, you also have what's called rally points or safe landing points. The software actually calculates where, where you are and uh, uh, get, takes the, the drone to the safest point in the area. Then once we are ready, we go I was into... going to say, Edwin, those were the little blue uh, dots that, that we showed there on the last screen. And yep. now you're now you're getting more tactical, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. That's a key point because um, uh, many operations are from from far from the home point. So you really want to uh, be able to rapidly and safely land an aircraft if required by any reason. Let's say you receive a communication asking you to clear the airspace, or you receive a communication indicating that there's you know a storm, a sudden storm coming up, and you need to land your aircraft. Returning to home may jeopardize the operation or the airspace or any manned aircraft. Just landing in the closest safe point can definitely make the difference. Absolutely. Then All we right. move on to, let me show you how, once you have a geofence, uh, you move on to creating a mission. So a mission is something you plan to do within the geofence. Uh, and uh, the one that I'm gonna show you here right now, it's actually uh, what we call linear uh, mission. A linear mission is 
more like a surveillance or you know airdrop type of mission transportations and so on so you just you know create that, that whatever you want and then you start defining actions per waypoint and those actions are you know displayed depending on the aircraft capacity and the type of sensor that is available on board the aircraft but you can actually define waypoints per specific uh, actions per waypoint or actions you know for all the waypoints at the same time so once you're pretty much ready, you know, updating different, you know, actions, uh, even the height or the specific, you know, um, kind of parameters you want for the, for, the, for the sensor, you can just simply, you know, save your mission and you'll be ready, you know, that's the way. And you, now you can use this recurrently. So once you have a geofence and a mission planned in advance in, a, in, the, in the safety of your desk, uh, you're gonna be able to actually move on to uh, simply executing during time. Now, I created what's called a linear mission here, but let me actually create something that is called, is cool in our system, it's automated grids. This is a pretty sophisticated feature where you can actually find grids for very technical captures. Um, our system supports that, so you don't have to go to another piece of software for actually creating grids. So we support both types of things. So let me just go ahead and create it. In this case, I created and I'm gonna draw it. Once I have that uh, mission created, I enter in, again into the drawing mode. The only difference here is that you're gonna start tossing uh, some waypoints for defining the area where the grid is gonna be drawn. Once you have that, and you see in my particular case here that my solar farm is pretty complex in configuration. So I can yeah. play with my polygon. And again, I'm just using, you know, uh, the, the, the feature of tossing waypoints, but I can actually just, again, upload a KML for the specific configuration of the, of the, um, the grid that I'm gonna, uh, or the polygon that I'm gonna use for the grid. And then once I do that, I just draw the grid. And you see the, the grid, you know, drawn here. And yeah. something cool is something we call um, customizable grids. So once you, you actually toss a grid and create it, you can actually customize it by changing the sensor, changing parameters, if you want a better GSD or you want a better you know, speed and so on. And you can just update the grid. Once updated, you're done. That's actually the kind of things you can do in the mission in part. Uh, wow. Once you're in, in the area mission, I'm gonna show you something cool. We also support you know, scheduling missions. So once you actually um, um, uh, create missions and, and, and geofences, you can go and start scheduling missions for your pilots. So here we are creating a mission for a pilot. Uh, I'm defining some of the characteristics of the fly. Who's gonna fly, where is it gonna fly, what's the kind of um, you know, uh, um, zone uh, that is gonna be flown. Uh, and I have the chance to actually select the specifics of the operation. And then once I finish selecting my mission and uh, my geofence, I'm ready just to kind of schedule it. And once I schedule, I'm gonna see it, you know, schedule in my calendar for the day that I selected, you see there. And if I yeah. click on it, I see some details and I can go straight to the mission from that point on. So I'm ready to fly, the system will populate that, yeah. Don, I just want to highlight, you've got a picture of a drone, you had sensors in the last screen, but your system is really drone and sensor agnostic, isn't that right, Edwin? Exactly, exactly. Good point there, Don. I mean, uh, our system is planned from the beginning uh, to actually support all sorts of different drones and operate in different types of contexts. So it's not a specific branded, you know, uh, operation. It's any drone, any sensor. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And we'll see some of that examples later in the process. Excellent. Now, once I'm just showing here um, something that is about the uh, customizable checklists. So we show a couple of questions just for the demo, but normally you can actually per mission, you can uh, define the questions that you want to see and have the pilot answering before, you know, the takeoff or before engaging the drone. And that's important for safety features. Now we're going here into what's called the fleet management. So you have the profile for every um, device that is registered in the fleet. And you can have a number of different uh, pieces of information that help you with the maintenance, you know, and um, also, you know, the kind of activity that the drone has done and perhaps have a plan for um, operating, you know, uh, schedule maintenance or repairs on the drone or keep it, you know, available or not.
Yeah, now we're moving on to um, another cool area of our platform, which is the Drone in a Box support. So we do support Drone in a Box. We are actually Drone in a Box agnostic, you know, uh, done to. That means we really support a number of different uh, boxes. Here's the console where you can actually operate the, 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 the box and see some telemetry. But you also have the form where you can actually register uh, every box that you have, any new one that you have coming up. Uh, in our system, and you can use it as part of a fleet in combination with some drones. We also support precision landing for actually landing drones there. Now, the part that we're seeing here is actually the logs. So if you actually operate a drone outside our platform and you have the log and you want to actually manage it in our platform, you can do that. You can bring that log up and you will be able to have it, you know, coexisting with all the different operations you did in our system. You're, you're going to be able to analyze what happened with that log and organize your work. For example, if you, if you have historical data that you want to bring on board our system, you can do it right away. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, moving on to the, the analytics part. Here you're seeing actually a number of different reports. They're customizable, by the way. Uh, reports that you can play with in, in different aspects, you know, look at the uh, pilot's profile, the aircraft profile, the fleet, you know, details. You can see uh, some log information from the aircraft, you know, related to the sensors activity, the rotors, the battery. So you have a number of different analytics here that you can use for different uses. Technicians, planners, pilots, you know, management can come to these reports. And this last part here in the analytical part is very cool. This is the precision analytics part. We have an integration with Pix4D for rendering. So if you have a grid and you capture the data, you know, and you have a, a, a properly captured a set of data, you can actually process with Pix4D. We'll see that later in our demonstration. And this is the area where you see the render maps, you know, as uh, resulting from that capture and that processing in our system without going anywhere else. That's actually built in our system. Wow. So end to end from beginning planning all the way through the analytics on the back end, that's managed. Yes, that is managed. Exactly. So it's a pretty cool, pretty robust uh, product that we have. You can actually license that product on your, on its own. You can actually do a number of different things in the manage area without the stream or the fly. We'll, we'll move on to the streaming and fly areas. But up to now, this is a pretty, you know, solid way of um, you know, running your operations and conducting all sorts of operations. This is another example that I wanted to show you. This is how easy you move from one, you know, render to another. Pretty cool. So we had one area. This is the other area. Actually, tactical teams use this for analyzing how they, they're going to enter into a certain area beyond, you know, engineers or, or architects. This is pretty useful for, you know, law enforcement and, um, you know, firemen, for example, for analyzing how, you know, they can operate an area under a situation or during, you know, a, a disaster or a flooding or something like that. So kind of cool. Yeah. Now moving on, we're gonna do a couple of uh, cool things here. So um, advancing, you can actually see that we have the LANS approval requests, you know, it's already supported in our platform. So this is one of the latest, you know, uh, things that we have here. So you can actually create your lands request, you know, plan accordingly to your uh, needs. And then, you know, once you fill out all the information where you're going to fly, when you're going to fly for how long and so on, you actually submit this to lands directly and you, you're going to get, you know, um, uh, the approval or the denial request, depending on the specifics of your request. Once you have that, you simply have the list of different, you know, approvals that you have. And you can actually launch your flight directly from here. So you can click on, hey, I want to go to this particular flight that I have an approval for. Uh, or you can actually schedule that flight with that approval already. So this is a pretty dynamic a way to actually see. You can set up, once you set up a few things that Lance requires, you're pretty much done. And you're going you're gonna to see those that are, you know, active and those that are, you know, expired. So you can organize your different approvals, especially when you have many. This is the way you actually go directly to a flight uh, that is pre-approved and you rapidly will be in, um, you know, in the air from that point on. It's pretty dynamic, pretty straightforward for flying and easily um, executing an operation. Yeah, one-stop shop. 
one stop shop yeah that's exactly the the, the the motto that we use you don't have to go to a lot of places to actually operate now we're moving on to the streaming part. Now, we have what's called Active Fleet Map, where you can see all the different drones that are uh, you know, operating or active, and you can engage them directly. So this particular case, I'm engaging one drone, for example, that was active. This is a drone that is in Colombia right now. So I'm gonna show it just you know, right there, uh, landed. We're gonna see it flying later in the, in the process. I just wanted to uh, show you that, uh, for me, it was easy to see it. You see that I'm operating the sensor right now. I'm not gonna uh, launch the drone simply because in the advanced observer capability that I'm showing, which is a streaming based kind of capability, I can operate the sensor. This, this is why it's advanced. Because I have access, I, do, I cannot operate the drone, like flying the drone itself, but I do can operate the sensors. So you see how I'm, I'm actually switching in between you know, thermal, because this drone has a thermal capable uh, sensor, I'm being able to use it and operate it. Now, I just closed the session. I'm seeing that there's other, you know, drones in the air. And then I'm gonna move to something that is very cool, which is, you know, what we call the multi-view uh, console. So you can have several drones, uh, their feeds actually listed here. You can go from four to eight to 16 to 24 to 32. So you can have a console with many, many, many feeds as many as you want. In this case, we have four. We are actually connecting the first was Medellin in Colombia. The second one is actually uh, Miami. Uh, so we have the second feed in Miami. The third that is coming up is actually in Canada right now. And the last one is actually a device. So you can have devices. In this case, it's a tablet. You can have a chest camera. You can have a phone camera, a tablet camera that you can engage here. In this case, it's a tablet that is running an Autel, um, you know, operation right now. And we're actually streaming the tablet's uh, direct screen to our window here, to our console. So you have four different um, operations here. This is pretty powerful, um, Don, you know, uh, because this is the way normally you can see and you can enhance your situational awareness. Uh, you see the latency that we have there. Um, you know, there's two, three flights uh, right now occurring there in the air. This is live, Don. So this is the kind of fits that you can get. They're, they're the pilots in command on the field in each one of the cases are you know doing their own stuff and you're just you know um, uh, analyzing that. Now I switch to what's called the floating windows streaming capability. So you not only can have a fixed console, but you can also have the list of devices that you actually can connect. That includes your fleet or other devices, as I mentioned, and you can just play with them, you know, and have them floating. Then I switch back to this. I'm just disengaging a couple of the of the ones that I already saw that they're working fine. I'm okay. But I want to see these two landing, by the way. So I'm just waiting for them to land. In the meantime, I'm actually, I, I might actually um, decide to simply you know, upload another, you know, drone that I knew it's running uh, right now. And I just put it in one of the spots that is available right now. So it's pretty dynamic in terms of selecting different sensors and being able to um, observe what's going on. This is a very basic from a, let's say, um, a streaming standpoint, basic uh, way to uh, access those streamings but very, very, very powerful in terms of the capabilities that you can achieve or the level of awareness that you can achieve with these drones. So and landing, these, Miami. This is can go to multiple stakeholders. Is that right, Edwin? Yeah, exactly. Now this, it's a single console seeing many, actually uh, many, 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 many streams. But again, Don, you can actually have this and we'll show later how you actually can share a link and have as many people as you define actually looking at this information real time. So you may be there just looking at this data. I may be uh, and, and share this with other people and all of them seeing what is going on. So imagine the major, you know, some uh, police officer and some other people just looking at this. So I'm done with the multi view uh, console. And again, just to kind of uh, show you another alternative. I mean, I'm, I'm again going to my um, active fleet map and I'm gonna connect an additional drone. So right now I'm connecting Canada. So Canada, again, uh, the same way I showed you um, Medellin in Colombia, I'm just going to Canada pretty quick and exactly the same kind of capability. You see that in my map, uh, I'm pretty far from home. I'm actually in Miami, Don, uh, and I'm connecting this beautiful drone, this beautiful day um, in Canada right now, showing that I can send, I can move the sensor. I can, this particular sensor has 
you know, um, a zoom capability. So I'm just zooming, you know, and playing with my sensor. Again, you see that it's advanced observer, so I can move sensors on board the drone, but I cannot fly the drone. I'm just closing the connection, and I'm going to show you one last, um, you know, uh, drone here so you can see that. Let me see. Let me look for it. Okay, yeah, zooming in. So I have a crowded area here, so I'm, let me just go over the drone that I need and watch it. And I'm connecting Miami, just switching from one to other to another. Pretty easy way. So in five minutes, I can see three, four, five drones and see if all the operations are going well. And it's a very fast, very dynamic way to uh, analyze the different operations that my uh, business may have. Okay. Excellent. Now moving on. Yeah, you see, I'm just you know playing with my map here and, and showing the audience that uh, you know we're actually in Miami here, already connected okay. to my drone. Yeah, and again in this capability I cannot fly, so I'm just going to close my connection and I move on to the next part of the demonstration. Again, moving my sensor here, it's important. Close my connection. Done. So far, great. This is what we call the uh, streaming capability. So again, you can share the streaming, you can share a link, and there's different types of uh, uh, ways to share that. You can share that, you know, publicly or pin based, or you can actually do it, you know, authenticated. This is different types of ways uh, for having uh, viewers to access our streaming. In this capacity right now, I'm actually just connecting one drone and I'm going to do a full telecontrol operation. So I'm in Miami and I'm fully telecontrolling a Canada um, drone, the drone that we just saw in Canada that uh, through the advanced observer capability done. Um, right. This is actually right now, you saw that the cockpit, the, the controls on the right hand just changed. You notice that now I have a totally different type of interface where I can actually control the aircraft fully. So you're so not only the Miami sensor and you're going to fly this thing in Canada. Yes, I am. And you see the latency, beautiful. You see all the fleas. I mean, I, I love when I see you know, when you see all the animals and you see the people and you see the cars and you see, you know, all the activity in a specific field. Now I'm showing here, you know, when you have the link, you can you can actually share the link, input the data. And I particularly showed uh, when you actually need authentication, the kind of message you, you can see if you're not authenticated. You know, gotcha. later in the process, I'll show you, you know, when you exceed the number of views that you yourself allow because you can define how many viewers you can you you, you want to um have allowed to see your 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 uh streaming which is you know cool for security capabilities or security purposes now you saw you know while we were talking i took off and i'm on the air right now um so this is a beautiful view i'm gonna just move the drone i'm bringing a little bit down you know my 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 gimbal just to kind of see a little bit more cool stuff and kind of, you know, have a perception of transition. You see, I'm just moving ahead a little bit to the right. I'm going to see that bridge there, you know, let me just go there and see it's the bridge. It's so crystal clear, what you can yeah, see. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, Don, it's beautiful. It's high definition. And take a look at the, uh, the, the cars. So they're fluid, oh. you know, it's like, you know, live. We have a, a less than a quarter of a second latency uh, done. This is important for real time operations, you know, especially when you're actually uh, in a pursuit or you really need to see things uh, and even have your drone reacting to certain conditions. You need that kind of uh, speed in the communication you have. Absolutely. Now, while operating the sensors, you see I'm zooming in, you know, and bringing the gimbal down and, and up or moving drone uh, and it looks pretty fluid. So you can just do it, you know, like real time and accordingly to the needs that you have. I'm just I'm going to just switch or move to the left, you know, yo, um, and see, you know, kind of the um, boats there. They're beautiful. You know, it looks like a cool area. <laughs> It yeah, does. we do I'm have both visit here. that place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a beautiful place, by the way. You know, and the day is definitely, you know, cool. Um, yeah, we have boats here here in Miami too, but it, you know, Canada is definitely beautiful. So this is the way you actually uh, do that. Let's let's just play a little bit more while I explain uh, a few extra things. Now, you have different type of uh, fail saves done here. You know. Uh, not only operating a drone, if for any reason you lose connectivity, for example, 
you simply the drone will operate accordingly you know there's different uh, ways you can uh, set up the system to react one of them is actually having the drone in the system waiting for recognition reconnection uh, and if after certain seconds there's no recognition uh, um, the system will um, return the drone back to home okay so uh, reconnecting it's very important now you can actually set up the, the, the system to say if I don't see any reconnection, just go ahead and, 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 and execute the mission that is in, in, in the system right now for this zone. And that's the way, you know, the drone will conduct certain mission um, instead of just landing, for example. Uh, so there's different ways. Now, um, the other is that uh, the system will always control that you don't exceed certain parameters. You can set up the behavior of the drone uh, for, you know, a speedier, you know, behavior or slower behavior. Um, and if you try to exceed uh, the zones, the system will simply, you know, prohibit you from doing it, will send you a message saying you're trying to exceed your area. Uh, you're not allowed to, will take control, will place you inside the, the geofence in a safe zone and will turn the control back to you. It's a pretty cool you know, way of keeping things um, uh, safer for you. The system assists the navigation done. So in general for telecontrolling, you're not actually, uh, you're, you're just indicating, you know, the direction of your drone and a few very basic controls, but most of the complexity behind operating that drone is actually taken care of by the system. So I'm just returning home here. I just click on the return home. I confirm that I'm going back. Uh, there's always uh, battery control, so if the system determines that you're running out of battery, uh, we'll initiate a return to home, um, you know, routine when deemed uh, that you have uh, enough battery to return home. Uh, that's a way to to uh, control the, the the landing. Again, we support precision landing, hence the system will, uh, if that feature is enabled, will land exactly where you want it either if it is a box or a specific, you know, roof place or any specific area where you want that drone landed. We're just landing here and finishing our demonstration of what's actually telecontrol. And again, you may have this in this work on um, browser sessions. You may, you may actually have several browser, se browser sessions open and fly and operate drones in different locations as required. The same way you saw we operate the advanced observer capability for different places. All right. This is done. Exactly. Uh, th this is uh, we're done with the flying. Now let me show you one final, a couple of final uh, sections in our software before finishing. Um, um, well, before that, I just want to show you um, Miami that I can connect Miami. We're not going to fly uh, in this opportunity. Just connecting there and seeing that is as easy as simply landing one and simply opening another one again and being able to access that drone there. Answer the questions. You have multi and direct. Direct is a, it's, it's a, connect, a connection that is straightforward to the drone, no shared uh, streamed session, uh, and the multi is for streaming to several people. Here, I'm gonna move the, the, the sensor pretty quick, and I'm gonna done. I'm gonna finish here the session and show you what's the mission history, which I think is a cool part of our software too. Oh, here the link. I mean um, uh, that I, that I decided to uh, show you and is uh, asking me for authentication. I'm using a different browser here. Um, but again, I'm not, not authenticated in that browser just to show you, but it actually is cool because that's the way it operates. If you don't, if you don't authenticate in this particular case, I'm not gonna allow you. Now, mission history here, you see the, the, the history of all your flights. You can access the data. I actually captured a few, a few pictures during the flight. I can see the telemetry. I can assign this flight to a specific project. And then, you know, kind of uh, replicate what I did and see exactly where I, I operated. And, and you can actually use this uh, other button that you see on the right hand to upload a report from a pilot on, of anyone else who wants to upload a piece of information here. Let me show you another here where I operated in Medellin with the thermal sensor so you can see the photos. These photos oh, are yeah. in the original. Yeah, exactly, in Colombia. And these photos are in the original sensor format with all the metadata that is, you know, uh, associated with that sensor. Now you see the button there that says pics for d This is the button you use for processing those pictures and have them render in a 3D uh, format if they are suitable for that. The system will let you know if those photos work for, you know, creating a, a, a render 
uh, in the system. Now we're we're getting to the end of our demonstration, Don. You know, uh, this is you know the cool system. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You know, Don. You know, and any questions you have, please let me know. Uh, this is for the audience and looking forward to talk to anyone. Well, Edwin, I can't imagine uh, flying drones, especially at scale, without having a system like this, and especially for operations beyond visual line of sight. Uh, you know, industrial, you, you gave a couple use cases, public safety, uh, critical infrastructure, disaster response. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on, uh, the ways that this can be employed. So thank you so much to be able to see the demo in real time and to see you especially flying uh, from Miami, a drone in Canada, uh, you know, while being able to watch United States, Canada, and Colombia all at the same time, uh, you know, really, really, really amazing. So as they say, a picture paints a thousand words, and you've given us a lot of pictures here uh, to get our brains around, but how do people get in touch with you, Edwin, to learn more about uh, Vodix and drone orchestration? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the main contact is contact at votix.com, you know. Um, you can also get uh, in contact with us via the website, votix.com. Um, there's a contact form there. You can email me directly, edwin uh, e. Sanchez at votix.com, e. Sanchez uh, with Z at the end at votix.com. Uh, and uh, definitely uh, anyone who is, is doing the uh, that is in, in the event that we're going to have in, in Vegas uh, will be able to contact us. We have a booth there um, and looking forward to see you around or through you too, you know? <laughs> All right, very much. Yeah, very good. That was Commercial UAV Expo UAV. next week in Las Vegas, and we will be seeing everybody there, and Ed, Edwin and his team will be out and about at a whole host of shows between 2022 and 2023. So contact them, stop by, say hello, learn more about drone orchestration. But in oh, the definitely meantime, done. yes, yes. Thank you so much. This was absolutely amazing, Edwin. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy for it. Looking forward to it and definitely, you know, willing to show everyone how many things can be done and achieved and the level of control and orchestration you can achieve using our platform in your own drone fleet. All right, well, that's all she wrote, and we are out here.